All right, YouTube, you might have heard it before and maybe even heard it on this channel, that prayer is a very important part of the life of a Christian and that you should be praying. I think I need to pray. Now you may know you need to pray, but the question is, do you understand prayer and what you're doing? Maybe, but. Stay tuned today on this video and on this channel as we talk about prayer, what it is, and how you can embrace a whole and complete prayer life. What is going on YouTube and welcome to, or welcome back to Faith Like That. We are a Christian ministry that is dedicated to helping you live a clean life for Christ and live that life abundantly. We want to help you raise a level of faith in your life and it helps us do that when you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you know when our videos are coming out. All right, so once again today we're on this video to talk about prayer and your prayer life, okay? So um, we've been talking about prayer at my church and it's kind of brought some things to light um, in my mind that as much as I say you should pray, that people may not still understand prayer itself and what they should be doing. So I wanted to do a sort of a deep dive into three components of prayer that should be part of your prayer life or make up your prayer life. You ready? Let's do it. So the first component of a complete prayer life that I wanna to speak to you about today is praying alone. Now there are some people who find it uncomfortable to pray alone. They're not sure what to say, what to do. Um, they get distracted, they, they, they fall asleep. Uh, for whatever reason, it's just not something that they're good at and they don't like to do it. But it is one of the components of a full and complete prayer life. We see in the Bible, in Matthew chapter six, about the sixth verse, Jesus tell his disciples, don't be like the hypocrites when they pray, being out loud in vain repetitions. Um, and hypocrites in that time would have been more like an actor or a pretender, right? So he wasn't really calling them a liar or anything like that, but he says that they're pretending. Now, he says what you should do is that when you're gonna call to God in that way, that you should go into your house, into a closet, close the door, and then pray in there. And what you do there with God will, uh, in secret, right, that he rewards you openly for it. Now, I do wanna speak more about just the being alone part of this. Now, Jesus is saying that you should go in your house into the closet. At that time, that word didn't mean closet, it meant the storehouse, okay? So he's saying go into the storehouse, and in the storehouse you kept valuable things. You kept crops, you kept animals, you kept things that you didn't want people to get to, you had them stored and protected. Jesus is saying that there should be a time you have for him that you treasure the same way you treasure these material things in your life. And it should be protected the same way you protect these material things in your life, maybe even greater than that. So you should be praying alone and in a position where you're alone with God. And he says that because when you're in front of other people, you may not say the same things you'll say when you're alone. You may not express the same things you express when you're alone. Maybe you don't want to look ugly when you're crying and snotting and you're, you're pouring your heart out to God. It's, which that's what's supposed to happen. When you're alone with God, it is the opportunity you have with him to build your relationship, to speak to him and to listen to him and to pour your heart out to him, cast your cares upon him and you do this in this alone time with God. So when other people are around you, you may not really do this. So when we say you should pray and pray alone in your prayer time, this is what you should be doing. Now you can use the Acts prayer system or structure or cast prayer or, or whichever one that is, that's fine. But you do want to make sure that in this time, you're not like the hypocrites and just saying something or pretending or acting or doing what's socially acceptable or what you think God wants to hear. You want to go in this time and be real with him. So in your alone prayer, pour your heart out before God and be real with God. I want to be real with you. All right, the second part of a whole and complete prayer life is praying with other people. So the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 that if two or three of you gather in my name and you're of the same mind on the thing, whatever you ask for, that my Father will do it. And that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. There is a very attractive promise here. 
Jesus says that if you're together, at least two, right? So you and somebody else, not just alone, you and somebody else, and you're on the same mind. Now, this word in that time would have been um, more of like a of, of a of a agreement, right? And like musical agreement. There's certain notes that agree together, right? B flat and C may or may not go together. But when we're both on C, we're in agreement, right? So he's saying when you're with at least one or two other people, at least, and you're in agreement, and you're in my name, what you ask for, my father will do. Amen? That sounds good. So this is the second part of your prayer life, that not only should you be praying alone and protected and pouring out your heart to him, that you should also be the kind of person that is of one mind with other Christians and praying for things that Christians would pray for in the name of Jesus. And what you would pray for, God would do when you're of the same mind and you're praying in his name. Is that so? It is. All right. The third and final component of a full and complete prayer life that I want to talk about is praying in groups and what we would call a corporate prayer. Now, this is still like the two or three, right? It's just more than two or three. This may be the assembly of your church, right? We're all in there and we're all praying, but it's still important in this place to be on the same page as your church. A good word with that agreement that I spoke about is symphonize. In the musical term again, that symphonies sound good together, but there's a multitude of people that are there, right? There might be 30, maybe even 100 people, a part of a symphony, and there's an agreement in the sound they make. And together they make a great sound. So together, if we're on the same page, we like we see in maybe Acts 4 and 24, where it says they lifted their voice to God. And it, even in Acts, when Paul was in prison, it said that they, they saw from the elders and they came back and reported what they heard. And then they all lifted up their voice to God and they prayed as an assembly. Now, if two or three could, could, could get God to, to do something for us, how would it sound if we are symphonizing, right? As, a, as an assembly and we're all praying that what God would do for us would be something that we can't even imagine when churches can get on the same page. So you should be praying alone. You should be praying with other people, maybe in small groups, pairs or trios, but you should even be a part of church or corporate prayer. Think about this. In Leviticus 26, right? It speaks about that five of you may set a hundred people to flight uh, or will set a hundred to flight talking to Israel, but I'll take a hundred of you and set a thousand of the people to flight, right? So there's a compounding effect there that what God is going to do isn't addition or subtraction. It's going to be exponential, especially when we're exponential in our gathering. And even in the gathering, another blessing is that Jesus says he's going to be there in the midst. He's not going to be sitting in heaven watching from there. He says, no, where there's two or three at least gathered in my name, I will be there in the midst. And you don't want to miss out on that. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So thank you for watching this video today as we talked about a full and complete prayer life. Now, you may still be a bit confused about how to pray or what to say, but I feel like I've given you a little direction to understand prayer a little more. It's not just one of these you have to be good at, but a full and complete prayer life is all three. Praying alone, praying in pairs or trios or small groups, or even praying at church in corporate prayer. And we're all lifting our voice to God on one accord though. So now to get more direction, I wanna highly encourage you to get more involved at your church so you can be of the same mind with them because you know what the mind is, amen? Now in your alone prayer, start having a habit of pouring out your heart to God alone. Some people haven't poured out their heart to God, maybe maybe ever. There's stuff still on your heart that's been there since you were in kindergarten, in first, second, third grade, and you don't need to keep keeping it there. Pour it out before God. Again, thank you for watching this video today. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you know when our videos are coming out. Also, if you're still here, I feel like you liked the video, go ahead and smash that like button. And until next time, have faith, be safe, and we'll see you soon.